With a world this big, we're sure that you haven't seen it all. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today, we're looking at the craziest details you may have missed while playing The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Because, let's face it, this game is massive, so there's no way you'd be able to take it all in unless playing it was your literal full-time job for many months. I know I've been there. So here's some cool details you may have missed during your first time around. Nothing here but Yen. Oh, we don't want to wake her up, believe me. Before we begin, we publish new content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Leo's Grave If you stumbled across this grave in Witcher 3 and thought, Leo, who the hell is Leo? We totally forgive you. See, he was a minor character in the first Witcher game, and even if you played the first game, you still could have missed him, as he happened to die quite early on. Let's see. Leo, stop! <gasps> Leo was an orphan that undertook Witcher training at Kaer Morhen under the tutelage of senior Witcher Vesemir, but he never made it to the point of being a full-fledged Witcher, instead dying during the Siege of Kaer Morhen before he could undergo the Trial of the Grasses. Upon encountering the grave, Geralt laments that it was a senseless death and could have been avoided. Leo's grave. A senseless death could have been avoided. Calm kitties. Witcher 3 is sprawling, and there's a lot you can do in between missions to keep yourself entertained, like undertaking side quests, playing Gwent, getting into pub fights, and hexing adorable little kitties to follow you around? Yes, please. Yep, that's a thing. Casting the Axie sign on stray village cats calms them down, causing their heads to glow a light, and most importantly, adds cute, fluffy recruits to Geralt's monster hunting posse. Now, is there a good reason to do this? No, not really. But is it fun to build an army of hypnotized kitties and parade them around the village just for the sake of showing your friends? Of course it is. That's what video games are all about. Trial of the Grasses Cave. I know this place. They held the first trials of the grasses here before they built the fortress. While you don't get to spend too much time in Kaer Morhen until later in the game, most gamers are too transfixed by the story at this point and are only concerned with completing mission after mission to see what happens next. Not that we can blame them, but if you took the time to explore the nooks and crannies of this old keep, you'd likely have found a cave northwest of Kaer Morhen that was at one time used for the Trial of the Grasses. That smell. Mutagens. Makes me want to vomit despite the years. Once you kill off all the nasty beasts lurking in the dark cavern, you can explore some pretty cool details like lists of people who undertook Witcher training and some archaic devices used during the trial's mutation processes. No idea what this was for. Maybe that's for the better. Lines of salt. <laughs> we need to talk. Toward the end of the long, winding Family Matters questline, in which Geralt helps the Bloody Baron track down his missing wife and daughter in exchange for information on Ciri's location, the two men set off to dig up the grave of the Baron's stillborn child, and in a cutscene, Geralt suggests alerting the townspeople to put a line of salt across their doors to protect from ghosts and ghouls should the exhumation bring evil spirits. Get word to the common folk. How to stay in their homes tonight and draw a line of salt outside their doors. Well, if you're the curious type and want to see if the townsfolk actually listen to your advice, you'd be rewarded with seeing lines of salt lining the doors of houses in the village. It's the little details like this that make this game so breathtaking. Hungry Roach Ever wonder what Geralt's horse Roach is up to when her master is away fighting monsters and tracking down leads on Ciri? Well, she's chillaxing of course, grabbing a bite to eat and a quick drink before Geralt returns to ride the hell out of her. Isn't that obvious? <laughs> Just because she's a video game horse doesn't mean that Roach does not have a need to eat and drink like the rest of us. You want proof? Just hop off Roach at any point, linger for a while, and wait until she wanders away to grab a drink in a village or chew some grass when out in the wild. <laughs> Tyrion Lannister's dead body.
Seeing as the themes of The Witcher and Game of Thrones are quite similar, and that Game of Thrones was red hot during the years of The Witcher 3's development, it makes sense that the powers that be over at CD Projekt Red would include a nod to George R. R. Martin's epic saga. What's even better is that they had a sense of humor while doing so. Remember when Tyrion was held prisoner in the eerie sky cells in Season 1? Well, The Witcher 3 enacts a little revisionist history in its own version of the sky cells within the islands of Skellige. If you manage to find these cells, you'll find a dwarf body that looks remarkably similar to Tyrion, right down to the facial scar. Well played, CD Projekt Red. Well played. Nice idea for a prison without bars. Shame he didn't know how to fly. Flying Ghost Ship. Seeing as it took a tweet from The Witcher's official Twitter account for a lot of gamers to even know there was a ghost ship in The Witcher 3, we'd forgive you for not having found this well-hidden detail. Hell, we definitely didn't find it. But if you want to track it down, here's what you have to do. Grab a boat and head to the tiny islands between Anskellig and Hindersfjall. Aim to get there just after 1am and keep your eyes peeled. Once a day, in game time of course, the spooky ghost ship will appear near this location before disappearing back into the seas once again. Don't worry if you miss it though, just try again the following day. Not a soul have been here, sir. Sure, not even passing through. Berna Bran. Is this your free flask? Is this what you call evidence of my supposed treason? It's pretty hard to have sympathy for Berna, seeing as she killed a whole lot of people just to see that her son became king of Skellige after her husband passed away. But being chained to a rock and left to die of starvation and thirst while birds picked away at her withering body? Damn, that's an unusually cruel punishment. But, good news, after she's sentenced to a merciless death by the Jarls of Skellige, you can track down her chained body on the beaches of Art Skellig and do absolutely nothing to save her. Okay, so maybe it's not good news, but it is an impressive detail. Now that Berna Bran Gwent card makes so much sense. And sea fowl will peck apart your remains. Check out these other great clips from Mojo Plays. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos.